Designing your own class is more challenging than using an existing class. This is especially true if you are trying to design a class for reuse in other programs versus a class for just your current program. Just as there is more than one way to write a program to solve a problem, there is more than one way to split up a program into classes and more than one way to design the data and methods for a given class. Designing a program in classes is similar to the work an architect does to design a building. You have a number of requirements and many different designs could meet those requirements, but some designs are better than others. Just as architects get better by studying designs of more experienced architects and practice creating their own designs, programmers become better at architecting their own program design by studying programs written by more experienced developers and practicing designing their own programs. When designing a program, a good approach is to look for objects in the requirements of the program. Think about breaking the data into groups of related data. Each group of related data could be a class. Also think about what actions you need to perform with each group of data. Those actions will become the methods for the class. Your first design may not be the best one for the program. After you've made the initial design, check if you think the data is grouped together appropriately. Also check if you have methods for all the operations your program will need to perform with that data. If you're designing for reuse, you may also want to think about what methods other programs might want to do with each class. We'll start by thinking about a game using dice. Creating a class to represent a die is certainly a reasonable design choice. Once we have the class for representing a die or dice, we can focus on other aspects of the game. A die or dice could be used in programs for many different dice games, so it makes an ideal candidate for a class. When designing a class, you should think about the data you need and the methods you might want to perform with that data. The most common die is a six-sided die, but there are dice with different numbers of sides, so if we're going to design for reuse, we should allow the number of sides to be part of the data for the class. The current value of the die is another piece of information we will need. Next, we should think about what actions we want to perform on the die. We will need a constructor to initialize the data. We need a method to roll the die, and the user may want to access the number of sides in the current value of the die. The book has a class for a die, but we will write ours slightly differently. We'll start by creating the class. We'll follow the convention and name it with a capital letter. We'll write the constructor and have it take a parameter indicating the number of sides. I'll add the type annotation that the parameter should be an int. We'll add one other item to the signature that I don't think we've learned before will provide a default value for the num sides parameter. This will allow us to call the constructor with zero parameters, and it will use the default value of six for num sides. Or we can call the constructor with one parameter, and it will use the supplied value as the number of sides instead of the default value. We'll store the value of num sides as an instance variable, as we need to know how many sides the die has when we roll it. We'll also initialize the value of the die to zero, so that we initialize all the instance variables in the constructor. In Python, you can directly access the instance variables outside the class. For example, if we wrote d equals die, we could then access the instance variables using d.numSides and d.value. Although this is legal in Python, it generally is bad practice to directly access the instance variables outside the methods of the class. This violates the abstraction concept that the user of the class should not need to know the internals of how the class is implemented. It is better to provide methods to access the instance variables. These methods are often called getters or accessors. Since the user of the class may want to know the values of both of these instance variables, we'll write getter methods for each one. We'll call the one number of sides and the other current value. Note in Python we cannot use the same name for the instance variable and the method, so we can't name the methods num sides and value. These methods simply return the values of the instance variables. Next we'll write the role method. It needs to set self.value to a random number between one and the number of sides, so we can use the rand range function from the random module. It might also be convenient to have the roll method return the value it just rolled, so we don't need to use the current value method after rolling the die to get the value. Now that we've done that, we can revisit the constructor. By setting the value to zero, we've given it an invalid value. We could have used the value one, which would always be valid for any die, or we could have the constructor call the roll method and set that value to the result. This seems a reasonable thing to do as the die will now have a valid value as if you're picking it up for the first time and don't know which side is up when you do. Note that we need to set self.numSides before calling the roll method 
since the roll method accesses that instance variable. Many games use two dice together. Someone using our class could use two separate instances of our die class, but since it is so common to use two dice together, if we are designing for reuse, we might want to make a class that handles two dice together. Your first thought might be to re-implement each method from scratch in a new class. We'll start by copying and pasting the existing class and update each method. The other option is composition, which is what you're doing when you make your own classes with multiple built-in values. After we complete the first version, we'll rewrite it using composition. We may still want to know the values of each separate die, so we'll add a second instance variable and name them value1 and value2. The number of size method does not need to change. For the current value method, we could either return the sum of the two values, or we could return the two values separately. I'll return the two numbers separately. We'll also update the type annotation for the return type. Next, we'll add a method named total that returns the sum of the two values. Note the roll method cannot just return a random number between two and twice the number of sides, as that would not match the probabilities of each value in rolling two dice separately. Instead, we need to compute two random numbers and store each of them in the value instance variables. We'll have the roll method return both values and update the type annotation for the return type. With a pair of dice, another method we might want is one that returns whether or not both dice have the same value. We'll name that method isDoubles, and we can return the result of the expression that the two values are the same. This class should work, but to be certain we want to write some code to test each method. Python has a standard way of writing test code that I usually teach in the second course. For now we'll use this main function to test part of our class. If we were planning to use this class in an actual program, we would want to test each method more carefully and create dice with different numbers of sides. Another option for writing the dice pair class is to use two instances of the die class as the instance variables for the dice pair class. This is known as composition. We will compose or use the die class as part of the dice pair class. Composition is effectively what we are doing anytime we write a class. We are using one or more values together to compose a new type. We'll leave the method signatures the same, but re-implement each method in terms of two die objects. This concept is known as implementation independence. We can change the implementation, but as long as we don't change the API, or in other words, the signature of each method and what it returns, we can change how it is implemented. We'll store the two die objects in a list and initialize them with the numSides parameter. If we wanted to, we could also take another parameter that indicated how many dice to create. This would allow the class to support as many dice as the user wanted and be even more flexible. But since two dice are common for most games, we'll just implement it as two dice. Since both dice have the same number of sides, the number of sides method can just return the number of sides for one of the dice. Note the syntax here for doing that. Self is a dice pair object, self.dice is a list, self.list bracket zero is a die object, and die objects have a method named number of sides, so this syntax is correct. For the roll method, we can roll each die and return the two values corresponding to the result of rolling each die. The current value method can return the current value of each die. The total method can add up the current value of each die and return it. The isDoubles method can return if both die have the same value. In case the user wants to access each die directly, we'll add methods to return them. We'll now rerun our main function and see it works the same since we did not change the API for any of the dice pair methods.